Hey, good morning. Let's go over today's trade plan. So in the overnight session, we saw that the markets balanced within a range, but held above support. And for the most part, maintained the gains that we had seen on Friday. At this point, heading into the open, looking at the other markets, we know that NQ is close to resistance and near an inflection point. Uh, looking at ES, the inflection point is 2111 to 2113. And uh, the Russell continues to be relatively weak. So far, the S&P has been leading to the upside, so some short-term weakness in the other markets doesn't necessarily have to uh, result in a big down move in the S&P, but we just have to understand that you know these other markets are still relatively weak and they are at uh, short-term resistance, so we don't want to see too big of a rejection, especially in NQ. Um, you know, in TF, perhaps even a little bit of pullback wouldn't be a big deal, just because it has been lagging behind, but uh, in NASDAQ, Ideally, you know, we get a break above uh, Friday's high, and then that can lead to an upside move and a test of the 1775 to 1975, or at least one of the resistance levels at 16 half, 2115. And ideally, from here, if the buyers are going to remain in control, then we continue balancing at higher prices. Now, in the event that we get a strong rejection in NQ and TF, and uh, ES fails to cross 2111 to 2113, which is the short-term inflection point in the S&P, then we can still get a pullback down towards um, 97 to 99. Uh, now, of course, you know, we have that three half to five half support in between, but, you know, that's an area that has been tested in pre-market. So, uh, you know, in order to trade that area, we do want to see at least a lack of strong rejection in NQ and TF and, uh, you know, we don't want to see strong downside momentum at that zone because it is the aggressive spot for buyers to be active. And uh, again, it's a zone that for the most part has been tested in the overnight session. So if we continue coming down to it and testing it, then, you know, it just uh, increases the risk and the potential for a break lower for a test of 2175 to 2101 quarter and 2097 to 2099, which uh, at initial support, it's still a spot where buyers can be active. And given that we don't have any major economic reports and volume is running below average, in the event of a pullback, 97 and 99 <clears throat> first test will likely provide edge and a uh, bounce back up towards 03 half to 05 half and possibly back up towards the uh, 2111 to 2113. In the event of a break below 97 and 99, you know, the buyers can still be active pretty much at every zone on the way down. And, um, you know, given the strong upside move that we saw on Friday, it's unlikely that uh, the market is going to erase those gains in a single session, especially on a day where we're running on light volume. So, uh, you know, on pullbacks, we'll still be focused on buying initial support, the next support zone below as well. And by that point, the range potential of the day would be quite exhausted as well. So, uh, you know, that's the downside scenario. That's not the expected scenario, but, you know, of course, we have to be prepared for it in case we do see a uh, strong rejection or failure in NASDAQ and the Russell. But the main idea for today is that, uh, you know, the markets continue to hold above even the aggressive support spot. So above 03 half to 05 half, we continue kind of consolidating, and then we get a break above 2111 for a test of the... Uh, 1775 to 1975. Now that's the all-time high in the S&P, and uh, you know, given the relative weakness in the other markets, uh, you know, that's still an area where sellers can be active and uh, they can still defend that zone on first test, especially if it coincides with uh, Nasdaq and Russell testing their own resistance. Um, now, of course, you know, S&P being the strongest market, it is going to be the toughest one to short um, in the event that we actually head up and test 1775 to 1975. So, you know, it's a good spot to take profit for the buyers. You know, it may not be uh, a spot that uh, provides too much edge to the sell side uh, simply because ES is leading the other markets higher, right? So it is a stronger one, and because it's leading higher, you know, it's, it's, it's a risky uh, idea to uh, short the S&P near the all-time high because, you know, even though we expect rotation, it can quite easily just make a marginal high. So that's something that we'll have to gauge in real time. Um, you know, it's not like an automatic short, but, uh, you know, if the right conditions are there, if we have a lack of um, broad market participation, 
to the upside and the momentum is not that strong and you know the other markets are also at resistance you know then it'll set up a scenario where uh, it could end up being a pretty decent spot to short the market for a move back down towards the uh, you know the 13 to 15 area but uh, you know that's that's not really big reward potential so um, you know that's something we'll have to gauge in real time so those were the main thoughts heading into the open the buyers continue to be in control but uh, now we do want to see some upside continuation or at least a lack of uh, downside movement in Nasdaq and Russell and then you know as long as we can do that then ES still has a shot at uh, testing the all-time high and potentially even uh, testing a little bit higher so those are our main thoughts let's see if the buy side can maintain control and we'll take it from there